Hello, loyal viewers. An American Thinks here back again for a quick follow-up on my recently posted video on the God's Eye. Uh, now, full disclosure, I don't have time for a lot of video production this morning, uh, but I did want to uh, sit down here and uh, reply to a few of the comments I got on the video. I got a lot of comments, actually, which is uh, uh, pretty cool uh, in a very short amount of time, so, uh, you know. You could say things are getting pretty serious. Anyways, uh, I'm glad that uh, this seems to be a topic that a lot of people are interested in, or at least interested in commenting on. So, uh, a lot of the comments that I got are about uh, various lakes that other viewers have found, um, and I didn't have time to go through and review every lake, uh, but I can do a few so that we can get on the same page here, um, so that uh, you know everyone can uh, understand what we're all talking about uh, going forward as I uh, you know finish out this uh, little series on this topic. So. Um, before I get to this, let's talk about the God's Eye a little bit. Um, of course, if we look at the God's Eye, what we uh, usually get is the bird's eye view, and uh, it's in intuitively appealing to look at. Uh, and of course, humans tend to be visual creatures, so we like to have a visual representation of things. Um, but I think what we're really losing here is the scale of it. Uh, if it is 100 miles in diameter, it would have an area of uh, 7,850 square miles approximately. Uh, that would make it the 13th largest lake in our world. And if you go to Wikipedia and uh, look up a list of largest lakes in the world, you'll see none of them look like the God's Eye. Uh, they have irregular organic shapes, and uh, the lakes that we do have that are caused by uh, known impact craters are much smaller. Really, there is no true analog for the God's Eye in our world. Uh, in my video, I'm only discussing the mechanics by which I think a lake like this could be plausible. So, I did get a few comments who said, uh, there's lots of lakes like this where I come from, and I say, well, cool, but you should call National Geographic and make lots of money because uh, no one else knows about lakes like this. I also got a few viewers who seem to think that I am implying that lakes don't have islands. Uh, but I think most of you understand what I'm saying is there aren't giant lakes with round islands right smack in the middle. Uh, for example, if you take uh, Lake Ladoga, which is the biggest lake in Europe, and you make it about a thousand square miles bigger and a little more round, and you put an island right in the middle, that's sort of what I'm talking about. Uh, we don't have examples of that. Um, but I did get a few uh, suggestions of specific lakes here that I uh, wanted to go through and discuss. So, first up, I'll give a shout out to YouTube user and fellow Minnesotan, uh, the Bovine Avenger who pointed out that a lake nearby their hometown called Black Duck Lake looks a lot like the God's Eye. And if you bring it up on a map, you do see uh, that it is somewhat oval in shape and it has an island right in the middle. So, could this be the God's Eye? Well, personally, while I find this lake very endearing and nostalgic, of course, because it reminds me of a lot of lakes I knew while I was growing up, this lake is only around a mile in diameter, which is, of course, big enough to swim in, but pales in comparison to the scale of the God's Eye. And the problem with small lakes is that the smaller you get, uh, typically the shallower they tend to be, making it easier for variations in topography to emerge as islands. If we were looking at examples of small lakes with islands, I could think of maybe half a dozen lakes where I grew up that are like this, but we're looking for a giant lake. So let's look at a few larger options. Uh, for example, uh, Lake Titicaca, located in Peru in Bolivia, is the largest lake in South America and is about half the size of what I'm supposing the God's Eye might be. And it's kind of oval in shape and it has an island in the middle. So, could this be the God's Eye? Well, the trouble with this lake is it is a mountain lake located over two miles above sea level actually. So the islands we're looking at in this lake would really be mountain peaks or ridges or what have you if the water had a better means of draining from the area. However, the God's Eye is not in a mountainous region, uh, so there's no way for us to suppose that the God's Eye formed in the same way that Lake Titicaca did. So the analog doesn't really pan out here. And the next candidate is Lake Nicaragua, located of course in Nicaragua. It's actually fairly similar in size to Lake Titicaca and is also fairly oval in shape and obviously has an island right in the middle as well. So, could this be the God's Eye? Well, the story behind the lake is actually pretty cool. The island in the lake here is called Ometepe, and it's actually a volcano that grew out of the floor of the lake. 
Uh, it's sort of the reverse of Crater Lake that I mentioned in my first video. While, uh, instead of having a lake inside a volcano, we have a volcano inside of a lake. So certainly very cool geography, but like I pointed out in my previous video, I think it's doubtful that there is volcanic activity in this area since it lacks pretty much any other evidence of volcanic activity. So I don't think it's a great analog for the God's Eye either. And on that note, let me add one more comment here that I intended to put in my first video and somehow forgot about until uh, user Equinox Omega reminded me of it. Uh, we have an Arya chapter in Clash of Kings where she is traveling with Yorin and they actually stop by the God's Eye and she goes and splashes water on her face. And the text mentions two times that the water is warm. So of course, one explanation for this is that the water is heated volcanically. However, I'd point out uh, this event happens as the sun is setting low to the west, and the beginning of the chapter mentions morning sunlight as well. So the lake has been soaking up sunlight all day, and Arya is washing her face in a shallow part of the lake right next to the shore. So my guess is that the more likely explanation uh, is that this water was simply heated by sunlight rather than by some volcanic means. At the very least, I'd say it's inconclusive evidence of volcanic activity in the area, so take from it what you will. Uh, that's all for this video, guys. I'm sorry if I didn't get to talk about your lake. Uh, I've got lots of suggestions, but I you know, just couldn't cover them all, although I do appreciate everyone's comments. Uh, but I have a lot of other things I have to take care of today, and I haven't even eaten yet. So, could this be my breakfast? Again, everyone stay tuned for the next theory video on this topic. And also a quick postscript here, I apologize in advance if I pronounced one of these lakes incorrectly. In my theory video on the others, I pronounced a Gaelic word, Sedai, instead of she, which is apparently the correct pronunciation from the beating I took in the comments, even though, of course, I'm not from Ireland and I don't speak Gaelic. And I even have trouble ordering at Irish restaurants. So if my pronunciation here didn't match up to your standards, uh, my apologies. I'm an American and I pronounce things badly. Cheers, guys.